So far in this course, you've been working with single pieces of data, such as the current guess from the user or the target value that you want the user to guess. But sometimes data in your apps comes in pairs or triplets. For example, imagine if you have a set of X and Y coordinates on a 2D grid. In Swift, you can represent related data like this in a simple way through the use of a new data type called the tuple. By the time you're done this exercise, you'll now know how to use four different data types in Swift. Ints, doubles, strings, and now tuples. Let's get started. All right, I've created an empty playground here. I'm gonna select everything and delete it. And let's create our first tuple. So we're gonna call a tuple called coordinates. It's gonna have some XY coordinates. And the way we do this is we give it a type and we put this in parentheses. We put whatever types we want in the tuple separated by commas. So for XY coordinate, we're gonna have just an int and an int like so. And then we can set that equal to initial value. So we can say two comma three, and that's a tuple. So it's two values combined together. And you can see over in the preview here, it lists out the two values. There's dot zero, which means the first value in the tuple. And there's dot one, which means the second value of the tuple. Now we can use type inference to shorten this, right? So when the compiler sees two, three, it can infer that that's a tuple with an int and an int because two's an int and three's an int. So we can actually delete this part to shorten it up a bit and everything still works. And if I hold down option and click on coordinates, you can see that it prints out that it's a tuple of an int int. Pretty cool. We can actually get it to infer it as doubles instead. So if you wanna make a double coordinates, if we put decimal numbers instead, so 2.3, 3.5, for example, and option click on coordinates double, the compiler's detected we actually want a tuple with a double and a double, pretty cool. In these examples, we had two ints or two doubles, but you can have tuples with mixed types as well. So let's say we have coordinates mixed, where the first one is a double, so 2.5, and the second one is an integer, like so. Now if I option click on that, the compiler has detected that we have a double followed by an int. Now, how do you access values? Well, you might be able to guess from what we see here in the output. One way is with dot zero or dot one. So let's try this out. So we, let's say we want the x value, x one. We can just say coordinates dot zero and it'll print out two over here. And similarly, if we want the y value equals coordinates dot one, then we see the three value. So obviously tuples are zero index. The first one is not one, as you might expect, it's actually zero when the second one is one and so on. Now, sometimes it can be confusing to refer to values inside a tuple by a number. Dot zero is not immediately clear that it's equal to the X value. So you can actually name each individual part inside a tuple if you'd like. And here's how you do this. Let's say we wanna have coordinates named. So now instead of just listing the values before each one, you put whatever you want the name of that value to be. So first one we want to be x, so x colon two. And for the second one, we want it to be y, so y colon three. And now let's option click on coordinates named and we see it's listed a little bit different there. It retains that the first one is x and the second one is y. And over here we can see it's actually given two the name of x and three the name of y. Now to access the values, I can now do let x2 equals coordinates named dot x and let y2 equals coordinates named dot y. And you can see here the code just reads a lot nicer. All right, now let's see what would happen if we added three elements to our tuple instead. So let coordinates 3D equals x2, y3, and z of one. Accessing all three values like this would be a little bit tedious, right? Add, because we'd have to add three lines. And imagine if you had 10 things in your tuple. Well, there's actually a shortcut if you wanna pull out all of these values in a tuple into variables that you can use later. The way you do this is you say let, and then in parentheses, you put all of the values you wanna pull out. So x3, y3, z3 equals coordinates 3D. Basically what this is doing is it's creating three variables for us all in one line. It's, it's basically the same as this if I had added one more line for z as well, but it's all in one line, which is a little bit handy. So now I can access these variables like so, and over on the side, I see them printed out. One last thing I wanna show you, say you wanna pull out the values of a tuple, but you only care about maybe two of the values. Well, you can do the same thing instead. We'll make x4, y4, but say you don't care about the z value, well, you can add an underscore there. That basically is telling Swift, hey, I don't really care about what this is, but I do care about the other things. And then I can still access x4 and y4 just fine.
So there you go. There's the basics of using tuples. Tuples are great if you want to easily combine a set of values together. Later in this course, you'll learn another way to combine values using structs and classes. But tuples are great when you need something to put some values together in a quick and temporary way.